Good morning, I am Pete, also known as Awards for Racing on Twitter. I've got roughly around 4,000 followers. If you're looking for Cheltenham tips themselves, if you go to my blog, which is in the links below, or it's pinned to my profile on Twitter, Risk for Rewards, um, you can see all of my selections from March, dating back to March last year. Um, I'm not going to do any tips today because I think we're kind of in the middle of no man's land where most of the value has been had because you've seen a lot of the horses run and the forms there. Um, and we're also just waiting for weights and entries. I see a lot of podcasts and things trying to fill up tips now. I don't think now was the time to do it. You've had 11 months. So in probably a week or two weeks time when the real previews begin, that will be the time because obviously we'll have a much better idea of where horses are going and what the plan is. But for now, I'd just sit on your hands for a lot of it unless you see something that really stands out. Um, so the first thing I'm going to try and get across is just a tip on how to win money at Cheltenham. Um, a lot of people seem to struggle with the concept that I put online the other day on Twitter and it kind of fell on deaf ears and actually went the wrong way. Um, when I was trying to describe a roll-up bet, um, what I mean is a lot of people see Cheltenham bankers, whether you never go to races or you always go to races, people still see these horses and whether they're putting the bet on on the Monday of Cheltenham or whether they're putting them on now, they think there's three bankers of Cheltenham, they're all going to win. So for example, we look at this and we see Honeysuckle, Champion Erdl, Shishkin, Queen Mumba, Champion Chase, Alaho, Ryanair. These are the most talked about horses right now. Everyone's saying they're going to win, blah, blah, blah. So what people do is they then go and slam their money on a treble, doubles, four folds, five folds, blah, blah, blah. So, okay, that's brilliant. When they all come in, yeah, that's great. But if you're going, say, I don't know, to the Wednesday of Cheltenham, so Honeysuckle wins on the Tuesday. Shishkin then wins on the Wednesday. Well, what good's that to you? You've made no profit there. You're just thinking, oh, well, if as long as Alaho wins, then I'm, I'm going to be making money. But if you if you want to enjoy that, if you want to buy an extra few beers when you're at the races or get the champagne in or do whatever you want to do, you can't do that because you don't know if Alaho wins. Prime example last year is a lot of people rolled the three novice chasers in. The Arkle for Shishkin, bolted home, job's a good one. Monkfish rolled in in, in the um, festival novices and then everyone expected Alaho to do the job and Alaho fell when two to five favourite. So it doesn't matter how much money you've had across the three, you've made absolutely zero. So you look at these three bets that I've just, and this is a complete example, I'm not saying these are bankers, this is me just trying to describe something. So the three bets I've got here, Honeysuckle, Shishkin and Alaho, those three horses, you put them in a treble and look, £10 pays £43. Okay, that's brilliant. Yep, that might come in. Am I going to put you off doing that? No, I'm not. And also, close to the time, if you want to do those sort of bets, then do those sort of bets. Fill your boots. But my advice is to get an, uh, this type of bet on as well, which is known as a roll-up. There's four weeks to the festival, so you've got four weeks worth of opportunity to try and find different horses, football teams, basketball teams, whatever sporting event you enjoy, to try and roll up with something else and then get paid this way instead. And so here's an example, and I am not saying for one minute that this is a recommended bet because Goshen is a head case. However, I put here just an example because Goshen's running on Saturday and it worked for the prices. So Goshen in a double with Alaho. So the same stake, you're still putting £10 on. The difference is both of those two bets return £43 from £10. The difference is if you turn up on the day and say you're going on the same day as the Ryanair, you turn up, if Alaho wins, you're collecting £43. It does not matter what happens with Champion Herd or any other race, you are collecting £43. And that's it. You, you, the job, you don't have to think about And also, say if Alaho goes from from currently obviously 10 to 11, say he's sent off 1 to 2, if you're going there on the day, you then need to put on £86 just to return 43 on profit. What you're actually doing is going there and you're just collecting 43 profit. That absolutely nothing. Well, actually, technically, you're collecting 33 profit, but obviously, four weeks before, if you'd had money on the single on, say, Goshen winning, and then money on the double, then it, the the bet would have already paid for itself, and all you're doing is collecting. What I'm saying is, if you do this with the different horses, it works exactly the same with Honeysuckle. It works the same with any horse with Tiger Roll. If you'd put this in the same thing with Tiger Roll, that turns Tiger Roll into a nine to one shot. If you go there and you land, say say you're a five pounder race punter um, and you have five pound on, uh, I don't know, Goshen and Tiger Roll and that returns nine to one. 
if you go there and you bet five pound a race, blah, 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 and your one on Tiger Roll wins, say you win your 50 quid on Tiger Roll, your day's paid for. So even if you've not won on any of the other races, your day's still paid for. If you, if you win on any of the other races, it's just additional profit. So what I'm saying is get your multiple side of it done beforehand. You could have a four, five, six, seven fold right now in the next four weeks. Just have the last leg as the Cheltenham horse. Yeah, okay, you can do doubles. Don't get me wrong. Obviously, that's perfect as well. But we all see what can happen with the doubles. Like I had plenty that went with um, finishing with last year with Shishkin. Um, and then the last leg was obviously Envoy Allen. And we saw how that ended. But because I'd had the separate and done loads on Shishkin, loads on Envoy Allen and kept them separate, I still got paid out plenty. Whereas if you'd rolled them all and said, well, they're both going to win, that's where you lose your money. So it's just my personal preference. And it's just trying to get a bit of advice across so that people when you go in there you know exactly how much you're going to collect as well if you've got say five horses across day one and you're like oh if honeysuckle wins i win this if that wins i win this then you're not going there thinking oh well as long as that wins then you're going there knowing i am collecting that amount of money it allows you to go in with a clear head it also allows you to bet accordingly and it just means that if you've set it up so that it, it might pay for your day, it might pay for a couple of bets or whatever, you're collecting it there on the day. You can't go there if you're going on the festival to Tuesday, Wednesday, waiting, well, as long as Alaho wins on the Thursday, then it'll pay for what I've already spent or in vice versa. So that's that's just a simple bit of advice from myself on the roll-up bets that I was trying to explain on Twitter.